Hello! In this video, we will continue our introduction to machine learning. We will provide more information about terminology, use cases, and types of machine learning. Last time, we introduced the concept of supervised learning. We noted that in machine learning, the goal is to predict the unknown value y from some input x. The input x can have multiple features, x1, x2, x3, up to xd, where d is the number of features or dimensions. In supervised learning, we are given a set of inputs x and their respective label y that form the input examples or the training data. A key aspect here is that for each entry, we also have the correct label or value y that we want to predict. For instance, we discussed a classification task in which you are trying to build a system that learns if there is a dog or a cat in an image. For this task, we have a bunch of images or examples of dogs and cats and the correct labels, dog or cat, for each individual image. We discussed that in supervised learning, we use standard functions or mappings that are tunable, and the training data is used to tune this function so that it estimates or predicts the label correctly. One important aspect of supervised learning is that because we are taking advantage of a standard function, we can reuse the same code for different problems. In other words, we can train the same machine learning box of tunable maps to perform different tasks. We only need to train it separately for each use case using the appropriate training data. This is one of the reasons why we can use supervised machine learning techniques efficiently. We can use the same code for multiple and different applications. There are many supervised learning methods such as logistic regression, support vector machines, neural networks, decision trees, and so on. But in some sense, they all share the same core idea. They just use different tunable maps. Here, we start with a general view of machine learning algorithms to build intuition behind them. We will discuss these different types in more details later on, but having this general view helps us have a good understanding of what these machine learning algorithms do. Another aspect that we discussed a bit last time was the point of view concerning reducing uncertainty. At the end of the day, you have some unknown variable y, and the goal is to reduce your uncertainty about y. While the word prediction is commonly used for machine learning tasks, it is important to note that the key idea is reducing uncertainty. Even though we often want to predict things that will happen later on, a prediction, that is, reduction of uncertainty, does not have to be necessarily about the future. For example, let's say that based on the features in tax filers data, you want to know if there was a tax fraud or not. You might have historical data of many people that filed their taxes in the previous years and if the output of that process was a fraud or not. Now, you might want to develop a machine learning program that computes the probability of tax fraud for the recent tax period. The fraud might have happened in the past, so it is not necessarily about the future, but still we might call it predicting because it is about reducing uncertainty about the variable y. In this case, you might want to say that y is equal to plus one if there is a fraud and minus one if there is not a fraud. This uncertainty view is important in understanding why and how machine learning algorithms work and eventually how to use them properly. Thus, we want to emphasize the fact that the key is reducing uncertainty. One issue that we want to discuss today is domain differences. The central paradigm in supervised learning is the same. We want to predict the value of y based on the input data x. However, there are differences in different domains. For example, in some scenarios, in principle, y can be accurately predicted from x, assuming that we have enough training data and a good algorithm. The example that we discussed last time about classifying cat versus dog images falls under this category. If we assume that the qualities of the images are decent, a human can identify if there is a cat or a dog in an image with a very high accuracy. This is the type of example that y fundamentally can be predicted from x with a high confidence. Of course, the question whether there is a machine learning algorithm that can outperform a human is a different question. But at least we can say that this type of task can in principle be accomplished accurately. As another example of this type of tasks, we can consider that there are medical conditions or diseases that are not very difficult to diagnose if you have the right data. Let's say you have gathered lots of data features x1, x2, up to xd of medical data from many patients. Maybe you collected information about symptoms, experience, medical tests, scans, MRIs, preconditions, and similar things. Again, you might be able to build a machine learning module that can perform this diagnosis with a good accuracy. On the other hand, 
There are some other domains in which the level of uncertainty about finding the unknown value y is very high. So in these kinds of scenarios, the remaining uncertainty could be very large even if the best machine learning algorithm is used. For example, this might be the case in some applications in finance. Consider the scenario where the goal is predicting profitability of a trading strategy in some financial markets. You want to know if you apply this strategy, will it be profitable or not? You might use historical information such as the stock values to create your training data. Here, let's say your output y is plus 1 if the strategy is profitable or minus 1 if it is not. However, this kind of problems are notoriously difficult in finance. Intuitively, if there was an easy way to predict what would happen in the market, we could all make a lot of money. This situation is because the level of noise or uncertainty in these kinds of problems is usually high. Even if you have the best machine learning algorithm, you cannot hope for the high accuracy rates that you obtain in some other domains. Nevertheless, machine learning algorithms could still be hugely useful in these types of applications, because even if your accuracy is a few percent better than your competitors, that could potentially turn into a large amount of profit. So again, the fundamental issue here is reduction of uncertainty. So even though we have a disparity of levels of uncertainty in different domains, there is still a huge amount of value in machine learning algorithms. So it is very important to pay attention to these domain differences. So I want to emphasize the importance of knowledge about the domain you are working with. In other words, you need to know the domain well in order to obtain the value of machine learning algorithms. We should not use machine learning algorithms blindly, and the use of common sense and the domain knowledge is needed to use machine learning algorithms in the best way. Another point that I would like to emphasize is that artificial intelligence, or AI, refers to a broader idea where we can execute tasks smartly. That is, you can think of AI as the broad discipline of creating intelligent machines. Thus, machine learning, or ML, can be considered as a subset of AI. AI systems often use multiple machine learning modules within them. As an example of an AI system, let's consider self-driving cars. These are autonomous systems that learn how to drive, going from location A to location B. These systems require multiple machine learning modules to operate. For example, you can imagine when the car is traveling, it should be able to identify the objects in the way or in front of the car. It could be a human being, another car, or something else. In order to operate safely, this AI system can benefit from different machine learning modules such as object detection and recognition. For example, is this a tree, a sign, or something else? Object localization, for example, where is this object in the space? Movement prediction, where is this object moving to? Or brake distance estimation, or passenger's speech and gesture recognition, for example, is the passenger alert, and so on. So self-driving vehicles might use a lot of different types of classification algorithms within them. There might be many different modules that could be separately trained and implemented and then combined together to create an AI system. Now, let's briefly discuss some important terminology here. Learning problems can be divided in two general categories, classification and regression. In classification, as the name suggests, we want to predict the class of an input. For example, we would like to know whether an input image has a dog or a cat in it, or we might want to know whether a patient has a disease or not. So we are classifying. We are putting the unknown value y into a category. In this set of tasks, the goal is to learn a mapping from input x to output y, where y could be one of c possible classes. In other words, y could be 1, 2, 3, up to c, where c is the number of classes. If c is equal to 2, this is called binary classification. In this case, we often assume y could be either 0 or 1, or we might say that y could be minus 1 or plus 1. On the other hand, regression problems are tasks where you are estimating a real numerical value. For example, I may want to predict the value of a house in dollars. As the input variables, you could think of the number of bedrooms, square footage, location, year of construction, etc. The output of our machine learning module might range from a few thousand dollars to millions of dollars. So in this case, the output can be considered as a continuous variable. Other examples of regression tasks include estimating some economic indicators such as inflation, GDP, unemployment rate, and so on, or estimating the age of a viewer watching a YouTube video. In general, regression is similar to classification, but the response variable is a numerical value that can be considered to be a real number. Now let's talk a little bit about machine learning approaches in general. We can categorize machine learning into three different types. Supervised learning that we have discussed so far, unsupervised learning, and finally reinforcement learning. 
Supervised learning is a type we have already discussed in detail, where the idea is that using labeled data, we train a standard tunable function to perform the task we wanted to do. The second approach to machine learning is called unsupervised learning. In these kind of scenarios, we do not have labeled data. We don't have these examples x, y. We just have the input data x. Usually, the main goal here is to find patterns or structures in the data. This is sometimes called knowledge discovery. A very prominent example of unsupervised learning is clustering. Here, we would like to organize the input data points into groups to discover their features or structures. For example, let's say you are a big company and you have had millions of customers over the years and you want to learn more about these customers. One way of learning more is to group them to different categories. Maybe a certain segment of customers behave similarly. Maybe I can cluster customers based on their behavior to group yellow, group blue, and group red. Based on this grouping technique, we may want to understand their behaviors better. Maybe I want to provide different promotions to these customers. Essentially, this is called clustering because we are just given some input data. So it's an unsupervised learning technique. We don't have any labels Y. We just group these customers into different categories. Another example of clustering that you might be familiar with is Google News. You go to Google News and it gives you the relevant stories of the day. And for each story, it gives you multiple links. The news articles are from different organizations. Google uses clustering algorithms to discover news articles that are talking about the same type of events. Thus, in general, we are clustering information to different segments or categories where objects belonging to the same segment are similar. In summary, in this video, we talked about the following. We talked about domain differences. We mentioned that the knowledge of the domain where you are using machine learning algorithms is important. We should never use ML blindly. We talked about AI and ML. We mentioned that sophisticated AI systems often use several machine learning modules within them. We mentioned that classification tasks are those in which the goal is to learn a mapping from input X to output Y, where Y indicates the class that the inputs belong to. We talked about regression. We mentioned that it is similar to classification, but here the response variable is a real number, is a numerical value. We reviewed supervised learning, which is using labeled data to train a standard tunable uh, mapping or box, as we called it. And finally, we discussed unsupervised learning. We mentioned that in unsupervised learning, we do not have labeled data. The goal here is to discover interesting structure in the data, which is sometimes called knowledge discovery. We finally discussed clustering as an important example of unsupervised learning.